you talk about teaching a kid to believe in himself or herself. How, how can we help our kids boost their self-esteem? You know, sports is so filled with ups and downs every day. Well, that's true, and, and it's a process. It doesn't happen, you know, just one time that they're out on the practice field or following a game. But, you know, sometimes it just starts with some verbal praise. It could be generic, like, you know, I see how hard you're trying. You know, I see you're giving great effort. For other kids, it may be very specific. You know, wow, you caught such a tough ball and you made that out. Or, you know, I was so proud of you, you know, the way you dribbled the ball down the court. I, I think you focus on what they're doing and let them know that you're noticing and paying attention to that. And, and that, to me, is more the process. It's not the performance or the outcome. And also anything that they can do that makes them feel good about themselves because you're really trying to build that intrinsic motivation that they want to do it. They want to feel good and they want to feel better. I think what was uniformly universal throughout the book is these athletes, almost every one of them really said that they were driven because they wanted it. They love sports. You know, the, the fire was within them, whether it was Jason Taylor, Santana Moss, many, many others. No one had to push them out the door. Start one section with a story from Mark Jackson, who is now the coach of the Golden State Warriors, played for St. John's, the New York Knicks, several teams during his NBA career. And, and Mark told the story like it was yesterday. He was nine years old and, and he hadn't gotten in a game the whole year. He wasn't any good. He was growing up in New York, which if you want to be a basketball player in New York and you're not any good at a young age, that's a tough place not to be very good at the beginning. And But he got in a game late once towards the end of the season and he made one free throw. And his coach acted like it was the greatest thing in the world, that he made this, scored this one point and that they put him in. And so what did he take from that? He decided basically that he wanted to get better because he wanted more, he wanted more of that feeling. He wasn't satisfied with just that one time. Well, I asked what made him as an athlete. He tells that story because it, it gave him a feeling of self-worth at that time. It made him feel like he was part of the team. But I think that story shows the benefit of getting the kid in the game that time and, and allowing the child to have some success. And what ends up happening is the child ends up developing some talent and then he ends up becoming, as the years went on, the best player on his team. And I'm sure there were other players who got an opportunity to play at the end. So I spoke to 120 athletes that all were successful. And you would think that a lot of them would have come to us and said that they'd been pushed. They all almost uniformly said they weren't pushed. That they had what Andrea said was that intrinsic motivation. That they had something inside of them that told them that they wanted to play. And a lot of them said if they had been pushed, you know, we got this from Quentin Richardson who played many years in the NBA and others, that they don't know if they would have continued. The, the story that I always cite, and I'll give the mic back to Andrea after this, is the, uh, is the Derek Brooks example, which is, you know, this is someone who ended up becoming a, uh, you know, an NFL elite linebacker for years, is probably headed to the Hall of Fame now that his career is over. And Derek had a very strict stepfather. And he went home and he told his stepfather he didn't like football practice on his first day going. And he thought his stepfather was going to be very angry with him and was, you know, going to take it out on him and all the rest. And his stepfather said, if you don't want to play, you don't have to play. Wow. And so what happened was Derek basically decided to go out for baseball that next year because his friends were going out for baseball. And then they went out for football together and he didn't want to not be with his friends. So he made a decision to play because he wanted to be with his friends and over time he came to like the sport more. And the point was, if he had been pushed by his stepfather then, he probably never would have gone back to it. He probably would have rebelled against it, but because he wasn't, he made a decision on his own. It's, it's having faith, right? That, that if this is what your kid's destiny, that you allow it to happen, not force it. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.